Mara Thomas, Editor-in-Chief of UrbanHealthToday.com, part of the DocWire family of medical news sites. And I want to thank you for tuning in to Urban Health Weekly. Our goal each week is to keep you informed of the latest in health and medical news right from today's headlines. It's time to empower yourself with open conversations about your medical care with news that matters to you. So are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, I'm Tamara Thomas and welcome to Urban Health Weekly where we talk about medical news and health topics that matter to you. I'm here with Jackie and Lou. How are you guys? Hey, hey guys. Hi there. How are you all? We are doing all right over here. Can I tell you, so last week I was sick. I had, I believe I had um, an upper respiratory. I, I believe I had COVID because the, my sinuses were burning. So wait, 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 do you think you had COVID or you think you did not have COVID? I think I had COVID. Okay. Yeah, because it just, it happened so quickly. Well, what happened was my little one, she was complaining about a sore throat. And then okay. I thought I had gotten through the week. I was like, well, thank goodness this thing passed over me. And then now here's where, where the whole thing about sugar becomes very important. <laughs> so I was doing fine that entire week. And then I had a stressful moment and I decided to have ice cream. Oh, oh, it was sugar and dairy. It was, well, no, it wasn't dairy. It was dairy free. Okay. It, it was, it was um, coconut milk ice cream, but it was still sugar. Mm. So actually before that I had, um, uh, what do you call those, those drinks? I had a mocha. Okay. And then later on I had it was chocolate and coffee. Yes, and sugar. <laughs> and then I had, and then I had chocolate and sugar. So it was like little, little chocolate. It's like cacao nibs and um, and sugar. It was all dairy free, but still sugar is sugar. And then the next day, I felt like I got punched in my face with like a Mack truck or something, and it all went downhill from there. And did I you have like, a sore throat too? I had, I first started off with the sore nasopharyngeal, you know, the back of the, the sinus yeah. back there. And then I had sore throat. It just kind of traveled down. And then I had a cough and I was like, oh man, my week is ruined. <laughs> I also had not been doing my usual regimen. I'm not going to, you know, I'll, I'll tell you off. Right. But I hadn't been doing my, cause I just gotten so okay. lax because of vaccination and just work and stuff like that. Right. But Ultimately, what did me in, listen to me, people, what ultimately did me in was the sugar. So if you still don't believe that sugar is really not your friend and is not bad, is not bad for your health, believe me when I tell you, I don't think that I would have gotten sick like that if I hadn't succumbed to the, um, the ice cream. And it was literally three spoons of ice oh, cream. That that's, so that's so unjust. That's so unjust. So wait, I, did your little one have a sore throat? Because my guy has, my little guy, he's like, I got a sore throat, mom. And so I was oh, like, well, you're not going to school with a sore throat. <laughs> and, well, yeah, I, I believe and that. that kid consumes nothing but sugar. I mean, he sneaks it. He, you know, oh. Uh, I'm trying to it? tell you, sugar uh. ain't your friend. Sugar ain't your friend. So uh. just keep that in mind, you know, as we go through this whole mask maskless thing and we're going to be exposed whether we like it or not by the way what do you think of the whole thing i know we kind of talked about it before but how do we feel about this this whole eric topol from yeah. uh, his haystack wrote a whole Substack. thing Substack. Substack. thank yeah. you he wrote an entire thing that everyone's acting as if the as if covid is over when it's not yeah, and absolutely and the second they had no mask my kid was like i'm not wearing masks i mean it's still optional but he's yeah. not opting yeah. and i can't i can't make him wear a mask while right. he's at school and i'm not right so oh what do you think lou what do you think of the whole thing i, I mean i think there's a time and place for masks and a time and place for not masks i'm still gonna wear them on planes uh in the on supermarkets, just because. planes, trains, and automobiles, and supermarkets. Exactly. <laughs> Shared by automobiles a lot of and, and all of that. But yeah, you know, I mean, there's also with the Omicron variant, with you know, uh, being vaccinated and all that. Uh, you know, data is now coming out of the UK uh, for the first time that the flu is deadlier than 
the flu is making a comeback. The flu is like, yes, yeah, we are here. That getting the flu, you got more of a chance of dying than getting COVID. Oh, I was I was quoted that fact by my kid. He loves to tell me that stuff uh -oh. in the back seat while I'm driving. Okay, so that that's interesting. All right. Okay. Uh, however, you know, as with all studies, there's a lot of uh, interpretation on that. Interpretation. Right. Okay. Well, if you get it, let's uh, not let's not get into like fantasy uh, land stuff. Let's let's no, let's stick to the let's land. stick to the heart. It, it Who, what, what journal was this? What journal? I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, it'll, please it'll be, do. It'll be linked. Uh, that that, that to, the flu is more deadly than COVID. Yeah, in the UK, absolutely. So it's a it's a new vari it's a new flu variant. No, yeah. they're just doing a study now in terms of people who got the flu and then people who got COVID. That the flu is actually you know now that more virulent. Now that people are vaccinated, now that uh, the Omicron variant is less deadly than the original variant, uh -huh. you know, both taken into consideration. Mm -hmm. If I come down with COVID or I come down with the flu, my outcomes are worse off if it's uh, if it's uh, the flu. Well, I'm sure there are some variables to that. Like, are you do have you had COVID? Because COVID is still wreaking havoc on a lot of people even after well, they've gotten over with it. Vaccination, it's over a population. And then or is it that people have been rushing to get COVID vaccines but forgetting about their flu vaccines? Did they talk about any of those variables? Which is pure. I will I will give you the link to the article. That, thank can, you very much. At, and then we can, we can then we can have a civilized discussion about it <laughs> <laughs> next week. But um, yeah, so Eric Topol is like, you know, like he's like the only one who can see the emperor with no clothes on. Look, I, I recognize that this is not ideal and I'm not pretending. I don't think anyone's pretending that COVID is over. But at some point, we, we can't continue to keep the nation shut down, right? right. Like we, I don't like the fact that I'm now much more exposed to COVID, but what can I do? We got to get back to it. You know, I mean, that's, I, I mean, it's not about the nation. To me, it's about life. I, I mean, it, am I never going to go on vacation again? The, the bug is not going to go away. So well, you could have, you could have always again. gone on vacation. It's just your risk. It you know, wouldn't have been yeah, wise. It, it really right. a vacation if you got to stand six feet apart and, you know, the whole pain. In the well, neck. you don't have to stand six feet apart from your loved ones or your friends, yeah, just from strangers. It's a pain. It's a pain. But it's, it's yeah, getting it back to it's more true. normal. Uh, you know, and I, I like a, a cautious normal is, is the way I see it. And uh, hopefully we can get back to that. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is a good segue into um, this, uh, this medical news article of the week. Ignoring behavioral and social sciences undermines COVID-19 response. The U.S. has bungled many of its efforts to rein in the COVID-19 pandemic. And Francis S. Collins, the former director of the National Institutes of Health, NIH, perfectly captured the country's fundamental flaw. Quote, maybe we underinvested in research on human behavior. I never imagined a year ago when those vaccines were just proving to be fantastically safe and effective that we would still have 60 million people who had not taken advantage of them because of misinformation and disinformation that somehow dominated all of the ways in which people were getting their answers. Wow. Thoughts? Well, yeah, you know, I, I mean, to each individual, I mean, everybody's got their favorite news sources and, and stories, but you also got to filter out, you know, what's true and not true. Uh, I, I, like to, I like to listen to at least two or three news sources um, just before I can tell you something is true, not not so much on scientific press because you know in the scientific press there's peer review and all that kind of stuff. But once you get out of the scientific press and go to the lay media, you you just have to listen to the story three times, find out what the commonality is, and then make up your own mind. And it just doesn't seem to be a lot of that. People are mistaking opinion for news. And that, to me, is a big, big, big problem. Just because somebody has a desk and a little banner and it says breaking news does not mean it's breaking news. It's uh -huh. somebody's opinion. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, I'm no social scientist, but to me, like the answer is so simple. People have access to too much unchecked social media, creating ah. and consuming it. And with that kind of access, you're going to get the stuff that goes with it, which is misinformation and disinformation. Um, you know, 
Do you think the powers that be should have factored in behavior? Did we ever have to? I mean, personally, I think yes, but I think what should have happened was a federal mandate from jump, period. Um, I just think giving people too many choices and freedom of certain choices. Does it um, become white noise? At well, they choose what works for them and not for the greater okay. community. Like when we give people too much choice in, in certain matters, you know, we, we're hoping that they're going to choose the right choice. We're optimistic, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not what's, what's happening with people now. People are like, what's in it for me? And once upon a time, vaccines were required to go it to It was school. a public safety. Yeah. Or to work in the hospital and no one batted an eye except for maybe right. like Seventh-day Adventists. Right. Now it's, oh, I have a choice. Well, I'm just not going to do it because I don't feel like doing it. I did my research and I saw and someone's, you know, as long as the, the data fits with your bias, it's your news. And that's what people are taking as their gospel now. And there are so many versions of the gospel. And that's what happens when you have like a deluge of information available to people is that this is going to do their thing. But also with that much information, our community leaders, like individuals, you're getting so much like because frequently people, they'll talk to like their neighbor, they'll talk to the community leader, they'll talk to. So now there's so much. Everybody has a different opinion. There's no consensus. Right. Is that what you think is coming from the. Yeah. And, and the ability to say whatever you like. And it's unchecked. There is no. no that seems to be sort of fashionable too right that everybody wants to have their own like very individual opinion and voice it mm -hmm. right you get that feeling too that like you know yeah like you know you 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 voice your opinion and you voice it so convincingly and dogmatically right that people take that as authority and that you know what okay. you're talking about okay and that's what I think is happening too, that the loudest, the loudest barking dogs are becoming the pack leaders. I think also people have this, this the, the, you know, we, we all do in a sense to be included and to be part of a club and maybe- And like a, part of a, like, yeah, identify with some group. Yeah. But the problem is, is that there are too many clubs. So many groups. Many offshoots many of clubs. clubs. Okay. Wait, and there's no consensus. Yeah. There's no general consensus anymore. It used to be, I'm, I'm an American, I'm a uh, Democrat or Republican, I'm, a, I'm this, I'm a New Yorker. Okay, so you I mean, even, down. and then even among those groups, you've but got now, factions now. Now you got to- right. Factions but, within yeah, factions. Then yes. the new division is, I'm a vaxxer or anti-vaxxer, and then uh, I'm a mask wearer or non-mask wearer, and then I'm a, I'm a this or a that. Uh, so, so there's so many subdivisions. And social media gives you the opportunity to latch on to people that are your subdivisions and your beliefs. And maybe every time you see their post, it makes you happy. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a psychological. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Older adults can blame memory issues on clutter. Empirical evidence and life experience both suggest that older adults have more knowledge of the world. However, in laboratory settings, they generally perform worse on memory tests than younger adults. So what's with this disparity? The answer might be clutter, according to a review of memory studies published recently in the journal, Trends in Cognitive Science. While some scientists think that as adults grow older, they begin to form impoverished memories, that is memories that contain less information relative to the memories of younger people, Tariq Amir, a postdoctoral fellow at Columbia and Harvard universities and the review's first author, along with his colleagues have a different view. Instead, older adults might actually be forming too many associations between information. Compared to young adults, healthy older adults, defined in the paper as those 60 to 85 years old, process and store too much information, most likely because of greater difficulty suppressing irrelevant information the analysis found. This difficulty is described as reduced cognitive control and can explain the cluttered nature of older adults' memory presentations. It's not that older adults don't have enough space to store information, Amir said. There's just too much information that's interfering with whatever they're trying to remember. This explanation stems from and is supported by the team's review of several behavioral and neuroimaging studies. Their paper makes a compelling case that as we get older, part of the problem is that we get less selective said Sharon Ranganath, a professor at the University of California, 
Davis Center of Neuroscience. Ranganath was not part of the new paper. It's a phenomenon that on some level is experienced across ages. A great deal of everyday forgetting is not necessarily because we cannot form new memories, but rather we can't find what we want when we need it. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah, you know, but I feel like the article is implying that clutter is like hoarding of the things around you. Cause you know, you see a lot of clutter bugs, but they're really talking about the clutter in your brain or right. are they talking about having a lot of clutter around you is going to be distracting you. No, they're talking about mental clutter, clutter in your brain. Oh so, yeah, okay. the filing system that we call memory becomes cluttered. Because you certainly see a lot of cluttering of like clutter of but, but you things. can probably look at it like you see a oh, lot of older hundreds. people and they just have reams and reams of right absolutely people. that's super that's frequent. kind of the same thing that they're saying is going on with their minds so right. i wonder if there's a way to like organize it over your like as you're getting older so that when you age it's not cluttered i'd be curious to find that out can you head that kind of clutter off at the pass Hmm. You, you have memory issues from time to time. Does this oh, yeah. feel true and, and to you? More, oh, absolutely. More and more I'm having them as, as I get older. Uh, you know, things like a name or, or something may take a while for me to get to that. I can I can picture it, but I might not be able to get the entire picture. So I just tell people, you know what, I'll, I'll get back to you so I don't frustrate myself. Because mm. it's only an endless loop. If you start looking for it then, mm -hmm. you're. it's almost like, you know the because you've got to go into such a long so you come time. up with a strategy for it yeah, that it's works almost like it's almost like going through a plate of rice and beans looking for one bean uh, yeah. you have to find the picture of this person in your head then you've got to match it to the name of the person in your head then you've got to match it to the association of the person's like okay so you have to put all these which means they're in different filing cabinets the picture of them the name of them the association of them you've got to put them all first you got to find them all then you got to put them all together then you hope they're the right combination when yeah. you <laughs> wow yeah, I, all the retriever that yeah. came to head with me when when there was our 30th high school reunion i didn't do the 40th but the 30th was such a disappointment <laughs> And, uh, you, you know, all the babes were not babes anymore. You know, I, I went and, 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 you know, I, I did have one friend that I stayed very close with from there. So the two of us were plotting and going and we, we were even dieting and, and, <laughs> and looking good. Oh my God, this is such everything. a good story. Yeah. And then we get there and it was like, oh my God, you know, it's like, oh. everybody looks so old. Of course we weren't seeing ourselves. <laughs> First of all, everybody looks so old. That's so great. So, and we couldn't even place a name to a face. I didn't even remember people. I mean, oh some my people God. Did you me. consult like a yearbook before you went? Yeah. Did you look at your old yearbook? Yeah, we did everything. We, we, <laughs> we contacted people and, and, and everything. And of course, they're not going to tell you like they, you know. They, and by the way, I use a walker now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You know, it, it was like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah you know, and, uh, and, and I, I just, that's I, hilarious. We, we left early oh. and, uh, we, um, we decided to, um, just go and have, uh, uh, Mexican food and laugh about the, the first two hours of the evening. We didn't even stay for hour three. Oh, wow. It was wow. That and then when the 40th anniversary came, I said, mm, nah. It's, it's only going to go down yeah, from and, here. And in five years, it'll be the 50th. This is the 45th anniversary, but it, it'll be wow. the 50th. I wonder if anybody will be alive for that. I wonder if that'll be just a very different experience anyway. Like maybe, well, maybe it'll be a totally different feel if you go for 50. Do you feel any desire to go in five years? No, not at all. But maybe <laughs> I will just to see who's alive and who's dead. <laughs> I don't even, even remember. I, I, I can't even tell you who these people are. Right? They all look different. They, you know, they, I, I have no idea. Oh, wow. You know, and, and it's like, if you ask me for a day in the life of, of high school, I, I couldn't even remember uh, what it was Or like. maybe you do remember, but it's so far back in your file cabinet. I mean, there's, there's maybe like, three or four snippets and they're all you know so I, you don't have like great nostalgia about your high school yeah it was like all sporting events is like 60 percent of it that i remember okay and um and uh, then the other 20 percent is you know i did get some academic scholarship and i do remember when they when they did it when they 
you know, they called the name over the uh, the uh, loudspeaker or whatever of, of the people that got it. And it was only three of us. And it was a pretty big school. Only three of us that got that. So I remember I remember saying just amazement. I, w- I didn't even have pride. I just remember the feeling of amazement when I got that. So that made an impression. Nice. Mm-hmm. And then I, I, you know, I, I do remember, you know, I used to sneak out and go to work. And I remember my, uh, <laughs> I remember the, uh, the way out of there without getting caught by the, the, the monitors or whatever. That's interesting. So I, I remember that. But aside from that, I, I don't remember much. So you were sneaking out to go to work. You weren't sneaking out to like go to the beach. Now it was to go to work. Unfortunately, it was to go to work. I wish it was to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I used to sneak out to get dirty water dogs because they, they, they put the onion. There was a truck down the block from yeah. the <laughs> from the school. That guy's entire business is probably kids sneaking out. To <laughs> yeah, get I would sneak out the back door. And I didn't have <laughs> lunch. So I would go and get the dirty water dogs. But the onion, yeah. the onion uh, it was like this, this like red <laughs> onion sauce all over it. Oh, man, it was so good. It wasn't very filling, yeah. but it was good. I mean, <laughs> it was like so good. But, you know, the memories come back, like, for example, I, I'm part of a Facebook group that uh, from the neighborhood that people post old pictures. And the other day, someone posted an old picture of Queen Center Mall, which was across the street from where I played baseball. And I saw the, you know, the, the two stores there. Abraham and Strauss and Orbachs. I mean, who Abraham and Strauss and Orbachs. Exactly. a and s and Orbachs. And I, I haven't seen that name in like 40 years. But all of a wow. sudden, mm-hmm. I saw the picture. And then I remember vividly trying to hit a home run, you know, and, and hitting the, trying to hit the sign as a baseball player and all that type of stuff. So it jogged your memory. It jogged my memory. So, you know, the, the thing is that, you know, getting back to the story, the thing is that we form little roadways or little dark paths to mm-hmm. our memories. Yeah. And if you would have asked me before I saw the picture, of course the picture helped, you know, what were the stores in Queen sent them all? I, I couldn't even have told you. But once I saw that picture, then I remembered like the entire layout of them. I, I remembered so much. And, wow, and, it like set it all off. Yeah, like it lit up, like it lit up like an entire neighborhood in my head. And I don't know how long it's gonna stay lit, but it, it lit up an entire neighborhood in my, le- my head. And and maybe that's how memories work. They're there, they're dormant. You just can't get them. There's no there's no road. You can't access. Ah. Yeah. But if you have a lot more of it, I imagine that it. it yeah, as you. And that's why they always tell people that are going to come down with Alzheimer's or seeing some dementia as they get older. Just keep your your brain active because I think it's those pathways. It's mm-hmm. pathways to memories. It's right. Pathways to yeah. to knowledge. That that how do you get to that piece of information? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the brain works very quickly, but sometimes to get to a piece of information, you got to make four or five hops. You got to maybe remember it when you heard it in school. You got to remember the book. You got to, re- you, you know, you remember all of that. And then all of a sudden it kind of comes back to you. I'd be curious if there's a way to, um, to, to organize it mentally so that as you age, you don't have clutter as they're calling it. It sounds like taking some sort of strategy, like Lou was taking a strategy for a couple of things. That's probably gotta be part of it. Just, yeah, organize your brain. One of the things that I noticed, like my mama was Alzheimer's, is that she had, it progressed, it was an inability to differentiate between the importance of objects. So like a paper clip, a rubber band, a birth certificate, a photo, they all have equal value. So I don't know if that's like, if there's some way to like organize that before that sets off. But you know, Taylor had hit on something like kind of interesting. We did look at the yearbook. But oh. when we got there, nobody looked the same as the yearbook. <laughs> that, whole exercise, My changed. that whole exercise was useless because now people were not looking the same. You know, so maybe, you know, they not even a little after 30 years. No, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of McDonald's visits and stuff like that. Uh, A lot of, you know, wow. Um, And um, and a lot of hair loss, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff went on those 30 years, you know, (laughs) that was a hard 30. Yeah, it was hard hard labor, especially for our neighborhood. (laughs) 
and um and you know maybe it's it's that little clue if 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 that would have happened uh you know it would have been a lot better at, at, at remembering who was what i we just i just couldn't did you I, remember any teachers when the other students talked about them oh yeah yeah but okay they, you know what but they were the teachers that i remember to this day there were two or three that were memorable okay but, so you have a really strong memory about that yeah mostly teachers who put me in detention or stuff <laughs> like that. well that's memorable yeah. mm. But but yeah, um, they, there was there's a you know aside from that the the, the memories was zero. Wow. And, wow! and you know it's a sad state of affairs when I remember my my high school baseball coach, but I don't remember who my math teacher was. Huh. Well, one made more of an impression than than the other. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you know who taught me more. I mean, some memories mean more than others, right? Yeah. Like some, yeah. So, moving on. Oh. I just realized we got to take a break. We do ah. take a break and we'll be right back. talk about red dye 40 and the ADHD link. So ADHD is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. In 2011, the FDA said that synthetic color additives had no adverse effects. However, research has since shown that they can cause ADHD symptoms and that some children are particularly sensitive to their effects. According to a 2021 report from the state of California, Research does indicate that children who consume synthetic food dyes, including red dye 40, can experience hyperactivity and other neurobehavioral issues. Experts believe that red dye 40 and other synthetic color additives may cause behavioral changes due to A, a depletion of minerals that play a role in growth and development, including zinc and iron, B, chemical changes in the brain, and C, hypersensitivity, which causes allergic reactions such as inflammation. Many studies on synthetic color additives look at red dye 40, although the data vary, the majority of studies report at least some connection between color additives and ADHD symptoms. Sensitivity to food dyes varies from one person to another, but most of the research has focused on children. Adverse effects can occur in children with and without pre-existing behavioral conditions such as ADHD. Symptoms of hyperactivity can include constant fidgeting, an inability to concentrate, being unable to sit still, excessive movement, an inability to wait their turn, interrupting conversations, and little or no sense of danger. In adults, hyperactivity symptoms may also include restlessness and excessive talking. Research indicates that hyperactivity in some children may increase due to exposure to synthetic food dyes, including red dye 40. But aren't kids naturally fidgety? I mean, that's Kids yeah, are but there's a really measurable difference. Like, you know, we have ADHD in our family and other neural, other neurological things. It, it, it becomes when you put them in with uh, kids their age, you will see like a real noticeable difference in activity level between and more fidgety that there's like all these like um, sheets that teachers and parents and um that would fill out, it's very noticeable in a group of children who is more active than the other. You'll see that. Huh. They aren't active, but all kids are active. And then also aren't boys, uh, don't boys tend boys to- Boys are more active than girls, yeah. And girls are often have uh, the inattentive presentation of ADHD as opposed to like a more, possibly less of a combined type than like ADHD with the hyperactivity, maybe just ADD, you know. Oh, I see. By the way, red is not a food color found in nature. So in case you were wondering. What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, yeah. Are you telling me? So wait, strawberries? Tell me like berries or fruits, Jackie. I mean like prepared foods, like juice drinks or prepared snacks. Sorry, I wasn't clear there. If it's if it's red and not like a deep color, like a like a like a blue or purple or something like that. If it's just red, that that's not naturally occurring. So I would check the ingredients and make sure because that's the first clue that what you're eating or drinking or giving your child is not ideal. Remember Kool-Aid? 
Kool-Aid was red, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Not only that, like we have like Kool-Aid powder for when we made stuff for ICES. Um, and yeah, we, you know, in the ingredients, it's all yellow number five and 40, like red yeah, number 40. blue all number six and all of this. Aluminum things. lake. It's all those, it's all in there. So yeah. we don't do, we do have like some food coloring in our house for when we make, um, when Science we make. experiments, I hope. Well, for that, yes. But also <laughs> I have a couple of like food colorings for like when we did like frostings or icings, but that was only like for a special occasion. They're still in our house, but oh. like for once or twice a year, but you know, all processed food has a lot of um, food coloring in it too. So it's hard to, you know, you can make red with a little bit of like pomegranate or um, be yes. There's a lot of substitutes it's, it's, that it's are a really kind of red. It's not going to be like crayon red right? It's going to be a particular shade of red. Well, but anyway, you can check for red dye 40 on food labels uh, if yes. you limit your intake. And they go by names like Allura Red AC, Red 40, Red 40 Lake, FDNC Red Number 40, Aluminum Lake, like you said, and FDNC Red Number 40. And also, you know, when you don't eat processed food, you're not getting any of that stuff in there. So it's, it does like, it's really, it's hard to differentiate uh, if my kid is bouncing off the wall because he had that or because he had frosting in addition to, you know, with the, with the red number 40 in it. Mm -hmm. So the right. less of that, the better, just in general, stay yeah, away. I think if you can avoid it, try to avoid it at all costs. I wonder how much like food coloring there is in like McDonald's and Burger King. And I wonder how many chicken yeah. nuggets have like if they have food coloring and chicken nuggets and like the pink slime or I wonder. Uh, I don't know. I don't even want to think about it, but do you <laughs> think like the strawberry milkshake is like that, that pink, do you think that's a natural color? I don't know. I, I would guess no. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I think, you know, food coloring makes uh it makes a consistent coloring. Like it yeah. doesn't fade. Like it looks it the same fade. all the time. Exactly. Right. Like with natural, with natural uh, flavors. Yeah, it might turn brown. Like my, my smoothie never looks the same from day to day. Right. You know, it changes color. It, it oxidizes. Like, right. Well, not even oxidation because it's like, it's like full of berries and stuff like that. So uh -huh. oxidation is kind of slow, but I'm talking about just the, depending on if it's got more strawberries or more blackberries or more blueberries um, or more cranberries, the, the, the color composition is going to be a little different. Um, they always drown out the green. So like it'll start out with green because I put the greens in it, like mm -hmm. the green. Um, what is that? Not watercress, arugula. So it oh, starts out that, the yeah. bitter. That's really good for you. Right. But once you put the berries in there, that drowns out that green. So it starts off green. And then after that, the, 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 the colors, the natural, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on what those are in the berries, the anthocyans, um, the anthocyans and the anthocyans, those colors just completely overpower the greens. And then you have, you know, so you'll have like violet one day, you'll have purple another day. You'll I was have- gonna say, what color does your smoothie oh. end up? It doesn't end up like- it brown does. from all your like <laughs> no no it hey, comes wow. out like you know different like mauve or it'll come out like a purple or it'll come out like a not pink though but it'll come out like different shades of depending on again depending on how many more of one kind of berry or or another kind of berry but it's never a consistent color and so that's another clue if it's always the same exact color. Well, McDonald's strives for that, right? Like they strive to make sure that their product is consistent throughout all markets. So you can go anywhere in the world and their strawberry shake milkshake is going to be that same pink, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's for standardization. Right. Exactly. And people come to rely on that and stuff. And I'm saying that that's not good. <laughs> 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 I trust the label that says color may vary because it's right. natural ingredients. Like I okay. can that more. Yeah. So speaking of natural, is it safe to cook with canola? I've left, I've, I've left Lou out of this conversation because he is very intolerant of, of this kind of stuff. Did you, did you have anything you wanted Great. to add, Lou? Well, you know, when, when it comes to ADHD, you know, I think Jackie's absolutely right that when you go to a classroom, there's a complete, huge 
uh, spectrum of behaviors, especially within the boys where ADHD is oh, yeah. a lot more common, where you have the quiet ones and then you got the ones with the, with the shaky legs and, right. and all that. But, you know, having grown up before this disease even had a name, it, it, there was like a, an acceptance that in any, you know, if you boys had, will be boys. If you had 15 boys, you were going to have, you know, the more active ones and the less active ones. And that was completely normal. And you just give them more pull ups. And, and then, exactly. And then at the end of the day, or you just made them the milk monitor or something. Or you made them yeah. stay after school and dust the chalkboard. Right. The thing about the ADHD whatever. kid is they get more punished, though. <laughs> And over the years, we've we've gone. We've conformity. medicated, yes. And then, well, first was you know the striving for conformity, and then all of a sudden, let's get them some medication. And I'm just wondering, have the drug companies kind of influenced the behaviors a little bit, and and the non acceptance of this behavior? Of variety, mm -hmm. yeah, and and really like told the teachers, well, it's not up to you anymore to be able to deal with you know, this type of disparity. You're right. There in, isn't an the intolerance in the classroom now for differing. Yeah. But I also want to say they're teaching a lot more stuff now. Like you get a lot more material earlier on and more densely packed. Don't you think? Don't you think the curriculum is- Yes, yes, I, yes, that's absolutely you right. Yeah, you're requiring but, more of kids earlier. And so there's less, there's less time, there's more material and they have to cram that stuff in. And so they require a lot more conformity and for kids to sit still and take it in. You know, right, but I think that's very unrealistic. Oh, and there's not a lot of recess. There's shorter the other recesses. Right. And so, and, right. And so that's also manifesting. Lou, so Lou but raises it's, it's, a very good point that yeah. the role of the teacher has changed uh, yes. so dramatically that it's it's like made it's made kids into like it kind of made kids into like this group Little of like standard things that yeah gotta... it used to be like johnny's just got a lot of energy let's give johnny some extra extra after school activities to like well johnny needs medication or johnny's a bad kid now well you got to do an iep you got to do this or that you know be before and it's also the way we rate the teachers now you know a lot of the times it's like well what's the test score is the group test score or whatever right Ooh. that's really right. hard then yeah. they're teaching for tests yeah yeah, and teachers used to be rated before, can they keep control of a class? You but know? I don't know that that's necessarily productive that they can keep control of a class. Like that's not necessarily teaching because then they you get one right. teacher who's a great, they spend all their time disciplining. And I would like yeah. to say that a lot of active kids like ADHD kids, they especially used to be like punished more often for things yes. that really they couldn't control. Yeah. You know, they really got labeled. They really got, you know, they came away with, well, self-esteem is a weird thing, but, you know, they really got disciplined a lot more and they had less understanding eyes than they do now. Now, you know, sometimes medication can take the edge off. I'll you know, but it's funny, off. though, because like a lot of a lot of famous people, and a lot of um, comedians and so forth, like they talk about their childhood. And oh, yeah. They, a be, lot of them were like what you consider yeah, the now, whole deal. right yeah. problem children. Right. But, you know, look at them now because they weren't medicated and they weren't, you know, they weren't treated like a distraction or a problem. They were just kind of dealt I propose with. that they were treated like a distraction or a problem and they made the best of it. And well, they, yes. like, they didn't go into academia. They went into what was available. That's what I propose. Well, comedy, it, it, that's a very specialized, like you have to mm. have a certain kind of intellect to, to do comedy. I don't think dumb people gravitate towards comedy. And there no, is a low bar kind issue. of comedy, it's but not, I think in general, there's it's a not an issue of intellect, though. That's not what ADHD is. It has nothing to do with intellect. Okay. It has to do with, you know, you could be super that's high the, IQ and have ADHD. Right. To, yeah, but smarter kids tend to suffer more because they, they get right. more easier or, or they. Right they're a little quicker. But... It's about impulse control. It's uh -huh. about compulsion. It's about all those things that you will frequently see in a comedian. You know, that's their ability, that rapid fire. Right, you know, right, right, come right. Come back, right. That, gets, that gets very honed when you're, you know, you have ADHD. Back in the day, you know, you know, teachers would do, uh, it was more of a personal approach. You know, they, they, would, they would take the kid. And they, they had more leeway too, though. Yeah. Now they just don't have leeway to yeah. do stuff. You would right. sit them in the front of a class, or you do this, or you do that. that not that you could get fired for doing some of that stuff, too. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. It's really complicated now. 
Yeah, it's it's a, yeah. it's a tremendous amount of complication. Teachers are just saying, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna steal it and stick by the rule book. But unfortunately for kids, the rule book is that labeling. And and yeah, look, um, do you know do kids at the age of eight or seven have an attention th- disorder? Yeah, they they all do. Yeah, stuff. that's within the normal range, right? Yeah. Then there's normal range, and there's the three knuckleheads in the class that are going to push right. the bed, and there's that one, you know, that one stand up. But that one stand up, you know, five, ten years later, may, may, not may, always in my experience, grew out of it. And, well, that's uh, the thing, like an uh, inability to wait it. their turn. Yeah. I mean, I was always an impatient child, and I certainly didn't have any, you know, I was always with my hand up, oh, 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 oh I know, or shouting out the answers and stuff like that. That's kind of an ability to wait your turn, right? I mean, but you know what? You learn how to channel it. You learn right. But that's the thing. As you get older, you learn but how what to... you see with really pronounced ADHD kids is they don't have, they have low frustration tolerance. Like that's a really hard thing. So building frustration tolerance is a process, but some really have great difficulty with that. Mm. I'll tell you, my dad apparently spent all of first and second grade, like sitting next to the teacher's desk, like on the floor, because he was very like, <laughs> impulsive and he was a little bit arrogant he was a little bit like quick with his so she you know but that was back in the day and little right. rock and saw that's what they did so yeah i don't i don't think he came away with great self-esteem for that but i he worked it he worked it out later it worked out fine you had to so, I don't right know. yeah right. and now there's just doesn't feel like there's any room for that right good point lou good point mm-hmm. jackie you guys mm-hmm. brought some, some color into this that just hadn't occurred to me Now, is it safe to cook with canola or vegetable oil? Over the years, there's been a big push towards canola and vegetable oil since they're high in unsaturated fats and low in saturated ones. But an isolated nutrition profile doesn't always tell the whole story. And that's especially true in this case. If you're trying to figure out whether canola oil or vegetable oil is the healthier option, or if they're even uh, healthy options at all, you may be surprised by the answer. So let's look at canola oil. Canola oil is a neutral tasting oil that's made by crushing the seeds of the canola plant. The canola plant actually started out as the rapeseed plant. Rapeseed contains two toxic compounds, erucic acid and glucosinolates, and they can't be safely consumed. According to registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator Shahzadi Devi, Canadian scientists figured out how to remove those compounds through targeted plant breeding and came up with the canola can for Canada and ola for oil plant. Oh. Canola oil, I know, interesting, right? Oil is extracted from the canola plant through a long manufacturing process that involves chemicals like hexane, Davi says. Now, in case you're wondering what the big deal is about hexane, because you're like, well, hexane, what does that mean? Listen to this. Hexane is used to extract edible oils from seeds and vegetables as a special use solvent and as a cleaning agent. Acute, meaning short-term inhalation exposure of humans to high levels of hexane causes mild central nervous system effects, including dizziness, slight nausea, and headache. Chronic, meaning long-term exposure to hexane in air is associated associated with polyneuropathy, that means neuropathies, in humans with numbness in the extremities, muscular weakness, blurred vision, headache, and fatigue observed. Neurotoxic effects have also been exhibited in rats. No information is available on the carcinogenic effects of hexane in humans or animals. So in other words, they haven't done research for whether or not it causes cancer. These oils, this sounds like heavily processed oil to me. And you know what I always say about heavily processed oil. And by the way, I've never heard of olive oil or avocado oil causing problems when heated or inhaled or any other type of exposure. Also, I've never heard of hexane being used to extract oil from olives or avocado. Just saying. You, but you know what put me onto the canola oil in the first place, what put it on my radar? I what? discovered that I am sensitive to it. Oh. So I would eat things and then I, my face and my body would just start itching. So I started doing like an elimination diet. And then I discovered that anytime I ate something that had canola oil as an ingredient or anything that was prepared in canola oil, I would start my face and my body would start itching. Wow. I know. Crazy, right? They so that's a, about that omega-3-6 thing, that that's like really like heavy omega-6s, right? In the yes, exactly, which is very pro-inflammatory. 
not like the omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. So anyway, that's why I started reading up on it. And I was like, because I was like, why should a common cooking oil make my skin itch? And like, it's in so many foods, you know, including like a lot of health foods. All right, so now let's look at vegetable oil. Vegetable oil isn't a specific type of oil. It's more of a general term that's used for any oil that comes from plants, including seeds, grains, nuts, or fruits. Now, by the way, functional medicine doctors will say to avoid any type of seed oil, but that was a side thing, sidebar. This isn't necessarily a problem on its own, but it becomes an issue when you look at the bigger picture. Um, by the way, did you guys grow up on vegetable or corn oil? Yeah, a little bit, but my mom used a lot of butter and lard, quite frankly, when I was yeah, a kid. That's actually good. That's lard yeah. and butter. Are but vegetables. once we moved to the United States, then it was like vegetable oil and corn oil. And it was yeah. a lot of canola oil. Yeah. I remember Mazzola was a staple in- Mazzola. I, yes, yeah. that was in our house. When yeah. We got Crisco. Yeah. Was... Crisco, that's yeah. lard, right? Whatever. Yeah. No, it's veg it's, uh, it's yeah, because lard me. is like um is from animal product. Crisco is like it's vegetable oil, but like, yeah. yeah, shortening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to, to Dr. Mark Hyman, studies show that the ideal ratio of omega sixes to omega threes is two to one. Right now, the average American consumes 10 to 20 times more omega sixes than omega threes. That's mm -hmm. a ratio of 10 to 1 or 20 to 1. Consuming a large amount of unsaturated fat sounds good, but the omega-6 fatty acids can be very inflammatory to the body, unlike omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. Inflammation leads to the main diseases we see today, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, dementia, and cancers. Nothing so what are we supposed to use instead? We're supposed to use like... I tell you what I use. I use olive oil. I use okay. avocado oil. Okay. Sometimes I use corn oil. Uh, corn oil, not corn oil. Not corn oil. Uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah, I, I use avocado butter. oil or olive oil. Okay. Yeah. Or I use butter. You but know. What about ghee? Ghee is actually, um, it's the, it's clarified butter. So it doesn't have the, 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 milk the solids. Lactose. yeah, it doesn't have the milk solids in it. So it's actually better. Like if you're lactose intolerant, let's say for example, um, it's, or you're trying to like cut down on dairy, it's really kind of the, the oil of it which is very nice and it's shelf stable, which I like about it. So, so ghee wouldn't qualify as the, it's not vegetable oil. Oh yeah, okay. So it's like, would that be, we don't know about that, like omega-3-6, but it's less like pro-inflammatory? I hadn't thought about that, about even looking that up. That's a very good question about ghee. If ghee is, uh, is omega-6 or omega-3, let me see. I bet I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, 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 do. I'm going to guess it's a three. No, it's it one and a half to one. So that's not, okay. too bad. that's not bad. That's yeah. Not bad. One and a half to one. So you look at oils, like say grapeseed oil. Oh my goodness. It's 696 to one. Wow. Okay. So, yes. So and ghee lard, is lard is 10.2 to one. Okay. Reasonable. Ooh, child. Well, in any event, look, I'm not here to say that canola is bad. Well, I kind of am, but it's, <laughs> not, it's, that, it's probably not a good oil to tether your health too long term, especially if your diet is already low in omega-3s because you're not eating salmon, you're not eating eggs, you're not eating avocado, you're not eating nuts, not peanuts. Peanuts don't count. They're very high in omega-6. Or your sea vegetables like seaweed or sea moss. I mean, like I don't mess with those oils because I, like I said, they make me itch. Okay. But omega-3s are linked to better immune and nervous system health. So I would say spend a little more on those oils, even if you have to get a smaller container of it um, and some coconut oil, which is high in saturated fat. So you should use it sparingly, but it's still better than canola or vegetable oil. All right. What say you, Lou? I don't know. I being that I I eat takeout or something somebody else. <laughs> you're the white oil. You're getting. I have no idea, I have no idea what's in there. Well, what know? do you buy when you go to the supermarket? Because every time I call you, you're like at the supermarket. You're like, I'm at the supermarket. I'll call you back. You know, but I don't. I don't really use a lot of oil. Uh, you know, when I whenever you, you I nuke cook, everything. Okay, whenever I do cook, you cook. I I cook with butter. Oh, okay. That's it's it. real butter, or is it like parquet? Mantequilla. 
Mantequilla. Mantequilla. It, it's just butter. It's it's just hotel bar butter, you know. It's, oh, okay. It's Orlando Lakes. It's, uh, not endorsing anything, folks, here, but. Is Orlando Lakes real butter? I'm not sure. I think. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. Well, moving on from questionable oils to unquestionably good oils, vitamin mm -hmm. D and fish oil supplements may reduce the risk of autoimmune disease in older adults. A daily regimen of vitamin D and fish oil supplements may help prevent older adults from developing autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, thyroid diseases, and psoriasis, according to new research published recently in the BMJ, which is the British Medical Journal. Mm -hmm. Autoimmune diseases, conditions in which the body's immune system mistakenly attacks itself, are very common, and their chances of developing increase with age. Though all autoimmune diseases vary to some degree, they mostly develop gradually, usually over the course of months to years. For this specific study, researchers set out to answer whether vitamin D and marine-derived long-chain fatty acids, aka fish oil, known for their ability to regulate the immune system and tamp down inflammation, may also have a protective effect against autoimmune disorders. As it turns out, they might. There are no treatment or preventative therapies available for autoimmune disorders. Nope. Of therapy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Joanne Manson, MPH, co author of the study and chief of preventative medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital, says, explaining that autoimmune conditions are prevalent and have major effects on health and quality of life. These supplements may be able to reduce morbidity related to autoimmune disorders. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go against what she's saying, uh, but I, I, I'm going to say that. To say that there's no there's no way to prevent, it's about education. Educating people to stay away from certain foods to begin with. What is that woman's name? Um, Sarah, was it Sarah Wilson? Who, the I Quit Sugar woman? She had Hashimoto's and mm -hmm. she reversed her thyroid uh, condition by getting off sugar completely. She got rid of it from her diet and she was able to reverse all the ill effects of her thyroid condition. That's all I'm going to say. There are things that can be done if you're willing to like dig in and do the work. But I will say that I started supplementing with vitamin D years ago because I had read that it helped with, um, with allergies. And I mean, of course, I didn't realize at the time I also had to stop eating the irritating foods and get rid of the nightshade. Right. But I did notice that I was able to go longer between doses of allergy medication. I don't know, maybe it was a placebo effect. I don't know. So then... I was watching a special about Nordic people. It was one of those 2020 specials um, taking um, fish oil daily. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a kid, my mom used to give us cod liver oil every morning before school. I wanted to ask you, does cod liver oil qualify as a fish oil? Because it's a cod and it's, a, is that extra different than other kinds of fish oil? Is it well, better? Cod than liver oil is supposed to be more superior to fish oil. Okay. The liver of the, the oh, but you had to take it like in a spoon every morning. Before oh school. my god, that's so yes. basically awful tasting. And now they have tablets, right? Yeah, they have tablets, but the tablets don't give you as much as the oil. And I, I started wondering, like, why did I ever stop taking that? You know, I remember it tastes that terrible. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Like after, you know, after we started hitting hard times, she didn't, you know, buy it until, you know, okay. teenage years and then onward, you know, we didn't do it. But I just remember distinctly as a child, her lining us up and it was a yellow and black bottle. That's so good old school. Look at that. Yeah. And, and she would line us up and make sure we all had one every morning. And that was just, that was just one of the things that we did. I didn't really give it a whole lot of thought. It wasn't like, oh, it's so disgusting. So did, just, did you get like, you were able to tough it out? Like you just got used to it? Yeah. I mean, I just swallowed it and that was that, you know, I didn't let it swim around in my mouth and make a big fuss about it. Like my sister did. Okay. Like, always okay. Made fuss about it and was trying to go and run to the bathroom and spit it out and all of that but I didn't I just swallowed it and it was done you know and then once you swallow it the taste has gone out of your mouth it's, 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 it's not tasty by any means but anyway I remember us growing up doing that and I was like why did we ever stop doing that and so I started taking the pills and let me tell you in 2020 when I got COVID uh I'm sure it was because I have like vitamin D and fish oil in my system that I didn't end up in the hospital on a respirator or with a stroke. Wow. That's, that's my, my Besides thought. Besides your fish oil, do you eat any fish? 
Oh, every week I have salmon, delicious okay. salmon that I bake. Yes, absolutely. I also have tuna. So I try to have fish twice a week. Okay. And some weeks it's only once a week. Um, but at least once a week I have um, fish and I, I, okay. it, I have it a, uh, and I make it a point of having fish, not, not just because it's healthy and you should have it, but because it's also delicious and easy to make. All right. Well, I can't believe I'm going to tell you this because if you, if you had told, asked me a year ago, I wouldn't have said it, but now I pretty much eat a tin of sardines every day. I can't believe Look, it. It's you. Trying, I'm trying hard to get it. And I was found a way to make it. Well, the way for me to make it appetizing was to be extremely hungry when I crack up with sardines. Oh my and God. I put, God. And I put like smoked paprika on it and a little pepper. And then sometimes I put it over like so tomatoes or some kind of like something like. Oh, some kind of nightshade. Okay. Yes. And I just eat them every day and I'm eating anchovies too. I can't believe I'm saying that. I've become like a little bit like craving and addicted to them. That's so. great. That's great that you're getting your fish that way. You know, my mom used to do that. She used to have them from the tin and she would, um, she would sprinkle hot sauce on it. Hot sauce. Right. I sometimes yeah. put like a little smoke flavor on there. Right. Okay. Oh, um, now, do you, now, now here's the thing. Is it in oil or is it in water? Well, I've been doing it in water, but I sometimes do it in olive oil also because that adds a lot of calories. I don't know what, but um, sometimes I have it in olive oil. So it's either water or olive oil. Is there, is there, should I be making a big difference? I would look at what kind of oil it is. You know, it's so olive oil. Oh, it's, it's olive oil. Well, then yeah. you're absolutely fine. You know, I like something that I heard recently that really sums up you know, our problems today. If you consume foods that people made by people in white coats, you're going to ah. spend a lot of time getting treated by people in white coats. <laughs> Remember, you only have one life and one body. So do your best to make it count so your years are full of life and full of health. Information equals transformation, people. So small steps each day and you'll see a difference. I'm sure of it. That's all the time we have today. We ran oh. out of time because we started talking about so many other things. Ah. Um, but it's great talking to you guys as always. Lou, you were very quiet this week. Yeah. This week you made some like really powerful points. <laughs> I don't know about that, but okay, I'll take it as a compliment. I did not get docs. <laughs> I didn't know I was paid by the word here. <laughs> all right. Guys. All right, guys. That was fun. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Urban Health Weekly today. I hope you'll join me and my friends next week so you can stay informed and inspired to take control of your health. See you next time.